Ooh, what a note. Oh man, okay, cool. Yes, Eric Marenthal. Hey guys, Andrew Berg here. Those of you who don't know, I'm a jazz saxophonist and teacher, and I am so excited for this video. Okay, I'm reacting to Eric Marienthal's solo on Hit the Ground Running with Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band live at Disneyland. And I kid you not, I was actually there for this performance. I was in the parade with my high school marching band like we did every year. Except that year, Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band was playing just after we finished. A bunch of us rushed out to go ahead and, and watch their performance, and it was incredible. So I was a high school junior or senior, Seeing Eric Marenthal's playing on this, he became one of my favorite alto saxophone players, and I actually later took a lesson with him, and again, it all stemmed from this performance right here. I haven't heard it since that one day I heard it live, and I really want to hear it now from a different perspective, now that I'm older, now that I've been playing longer. So we're going to be listening through a couple different clips throughout the song, um, just to kind of get a feel of what the song sounds like, but I really want to focus most of the time on Eric Marenthal's solos that he has in this. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so I want to say really quick, um, Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band, I loved them when I was in high school. Um, my high school jazz band played a lot of these different Gordon Goodwin charts. Um, we always enjoyed them. They're always so fun to play. Uh, but what really makes the Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band sound so good is how tight their horn section is. Listen to them play, they are so precise. Sometimes it almost gets too precise, if you know what I mean, uh, where it kind of almost doesn't sound real anymore. And they are so technically proficient and so and blend so well as a group. Man, okay, so I haven't listened to Eric Barenthal in a while. Um, I forgot kind of how smooth his sound was. I forgot that he kind of was a smooth jazz player, um, or fusion, I don't know, somewhere in that genre. Um, the thing that I think makes him a little bit different than most smooth jazz players is that he's extremely competent. <laughs> the thing I think that makes him so much different than most smooth jazz artists is that he can really play funk really well as well. Um, and I mean that he is very technically proficient, which I already talked about. Um, but also his feel is really good, he has an incredible range, um, and he gets a little bit more aggressive than most smooth jazz players do. What a note! Oh man, he's... Oh, okay. Yes, this is why I like Eric Marenthal, right here. Man, that line up to the top and that top and the... I've listened to that again real quick. Let's just go back a, little, a few seconds and listen to that again. Because it is so good. He has so much control of his instrument. He's growling up top. It's just... Okay, so not only does he have that, that, that technical line where he rips up to the top, he has that high altissimo note, but now he's also going to play some rhythmic stuff in there, and again, this is classic Eric Marenthal playing with Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band, because it is so good, he's such a distinguished style with this, and it's, it's, it's incredible. Oh man, okay, so his articulations through this are so clean. He's playing so staccato through it. It's so, it's such a good sound. I love it. Um, it's really groovy with the, what the band is doing. Um, he's able to play these rhythmic parts over it and it sounds so incredible. And his sound is huge on the alto. I mean, I'm sure that on office that he has doesn't hurt either, but his sound is huge and he's just filling up the room. Man, 
okay, okay. Hold on one second. I'm gonna figure out that notice really quick. Just give me one second. Okay, I think it's going to a high D on the upper saxophone, which is a concert F. And that is, that's a high note on the alto. That's, I mean, it's basically as high as you go with a, with a good sound at that point. Um, you, you, you really can't get too much higher than that um, and still have it be a clear note that he's playing. That is such a clear note that he's playing right there. And he's growling up into it, but then that solid D right there, he's just playing it straight through. It's, it's incredible his range that he has on this. Oh man, okay, cool. Yes, Eric Marenthal. And actually what he's doing really isn't even that complicated. I think he's playing over a C7 chord right here. Um, and he's just playing through the scale. Um, it's just really all he's doing. But since he's playing these like two and a half, six tuplets in a row and then having it repeat again, so it's coming in again on the upbeat, um, which really gives such a cool effect and he's able to play through this line, have it sound really kind of cool and technical and complicated, but it's really not that complicated to even do. So it's something that you can even do at home. I'll put it on the screen right now so you can see what this line is after I transcribe it. But as you can see, it's not that technically complicated. The hardest part about it is just to be able to get that timing of it and even to think of this um, on your own to begin with because he's he's improvising. Uh, I'm sure he, I mean, from listening to Eric Marenthal in the past, um, he definitely has a few lines that he likes to come back to. Um, I can't recall really hearing this too often before, um, but I'm sure he has some different licks that he has in his back pocket that he pulls out in different situations. Um, but that takes a lot of skill as well to be able to pull them off and make them sound extremely natural even though they are more something that you have worked on before. Okay, cool. So I love that he's given the opportunity to solo twice in this song because once really isn't enough, honestly. Um, but really quick, we'll talk about something he just played out there. It's very rhythmic. He's only playing between maybe two or three different notes right there. I'll play again right now. Okay, cool. It's such an effective way to play through this. Again, he's playing this kind of funk style, funk rock style right now. Um, but such a good way to approach this kind of a solo too. Because honestly, it just it's more fun. It, it's something that's it's so fun to play. And for this kind of audience that's listening to this, um, they really just want to have a good time. They want to be able to listen to this and just really enjoy it. So he's playing 100% to what the audience wants to hear. And it's, it's a really, really solid idea for a solo. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna break down again that is really quick and put it on the screen right now. This is again something that's super simple with what he's doing, right? He's just playing four notes really, um, just playing them repetitive over and over and over again, and then he just changes one note, the top note. And he changes the rhythm slightly on it, but he's really just playing those four notes on repetition the entire time, um, which is so cool because again, it's something as simple as the lick I showed you guys before. Um, it's just as simple. But the way he does it and the way he changes that rhythm just slightly and changes those top notes, it really makes it grow with intensity and feel kind of like an outside kind of line, even though in reality he knows exactly where he's at the entire time because he is grounded in that one main lick from the beginning. Okay, okay, okay. Um, that was that was good. So that was a lot more of a chromatic line then, instead of the other ones were more scalar. Um, this is definitely more chromatic. What's kind of funny is I actually have an Eric Marienthal book, um, so about like creative licks or creative lines, something like that. Um, I'll put it on the screen right now. Um, I think I actually recognize this line from that book. I could be wrong. I, I don't quote me on that. Um, but again, he's he's a player who likes to play a lot of licks. He likes to have a lot of things in his back pocket. He pulls out during his solos. Um, 
And I was also that he's improvising because it's not something that he actually planned to put in that exact spot necessarily. Um, but he definitely has some ideas and is able to access them really easily. Um, I actually used that book for all after I had a lesson with him um, because it was so interesting and you could use the different licks and the sound really out there and cool. And yeah, so that's it's kind of funny. I just realized that I think I recognize that lick from, from his book. <laughs> Okay, so it's another example where he's playing something that sounds really out, and I think it's somewhat out, but I think also he's using a lot of chromatics throughout it. He's really just playing over a few dominant chords this entire piece. There's just not much that he's playing that's not just a dominant chord, and most of it's in the key of concert C7. So if he's playing over that same chord the entire time, of course he has to find ways to make this more interesting, more, more harmonically interesting. Um, so playing these chromatic lines throughout it, it really gets a feeling of him playing outside, but he still knows right where he's at because, again, the chords aren't changing rapidly or anything. He always knows how to wait, find his way back again to that C7. Okay, again, I love I love a good Eric Barenthal growled autismo note. It's just it's it's great. <laughs> Okay, man, he is, that was a great solo. This gave me so much nostalgia, honestly, to go back and listen to Eric Barenthal. I haven't listened to him in probably five or six years at least. Um, but again, this, this is the solo that made me interested in him in the first place, seeing it live. Some things I don't like about Eric Barenthal much is because he's, he's a lick player, he really has his solos built around these licks that he just kind of improvises between to get between one to the other. But I think it really lends itself to this style of music, this kind of rock, funk, um, jazz sort of thing, uh, especially the big band. It really works well. Um, really gives him a, a way to stand out from the rest of the group as well. Um, so the ba background figures are playing these kind of more complicated parts and the band is so tight. He's able to play these parts over the top of it and it sounds amazing every single time. But it's a helpful tip from me to you. If you like this kind of music, don't look up his solo albums. I'm not saying that to be mean or anything. He just has a very different style when he plays on it. I'll give you an example right now. Very different than this. Um, again, not to say that it's it's inherently bad. It's not something that I necessarily like listening to. I'm not a big smooth jazz person, but I love his playing with the Garden Glitz that band. And there's a lot of live videos out there of him that are truly amazing playing the style of music. Um, and I love it. I, I think when it comes to that, for modern playing for this style of music, I think he's kind of the go-to guy because um, he's a very different style than someone like Lenny Pickett, for example, or the Tower Power horn section. Um, even though it's still funk and rock, it, it, it's something that's very different. And I think that his style is very suited to this exact group. And I think he definitely found his, his niche there. And I, it's exciting to see him play in these kinds of groups. Thanks for watching. Please comment down below if you know of anyone else I should be reacting to. I post once a week on Thursdays. As always, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're notified the next time I post. One last thing. Practice.